Hello everyone, I am Faith Njeringure. Welcome to our today's lesson, Peer Writing, BJL 3209. Glad to have you today. And uh, in our today's uh, lecture, we will be defining what is uh, peer writing and also we'll be discussing the activities uh, of uh, PR and also discussing the tools of PR and also discussing the models of PR and we'll be looking at how these models are applicable when it comes to public relations writing. Now let's go to the introduction and uh, from our introduction we'll start by defining what uh, is a PR and having an overview what is a uh, public relations and uh, I'll just uh, read uh, what was uh, defined by a scholar known as uh, Jeff Kins in 1998. And uh, to him, public uh, relation is a deliberate, planned and sustained effort to establish and maintain understanding between an organization and its public. Uh, borrowing from uh, whatever Jeff Kins uh, defined in 1998, we find that public relations is something that is uh, planned. Uh, you plan how to com you plan as an organization how to communicate with your public uh, for the purposes of maintaining mutual understanding and for the purposes of uh, maintaining their relationship with your public and uh, also. Jeff Kins went ahead uh, to to discuss uh, further that for an organization to establish or maintain uh, an understanding with uh, its public, uh, there must be distribution and also management of information. Therefore, the organization will end up uh, uh, distributing information and also sending information to its public. And you find that this information can be submitted or can be distributed to the public using different uh, PR tools and also for this information which is uh, submitted or even uh, shared with the public the information has to be written effectively just because you are airing information or even you are sharing information with your public it doesn't uh, mean that you you are writing or your content um, should have some grammatical errors or your information should not be factual that was uh, just an introduction that uh, and we have borrowed much from uh, Jeff Kins as uh, far as the introduction is uh, concerned. Um, now we'll proceed uh, and we'll continue with uh, looking at uh, different uh, publics or who are the publics and uh, the publics are the the public are the target market or the target audience or the target uh, people who are targeted by the organization for the purposes of communication and also maintaining mutual understanding. And you can see there is a diagram here or a picture that uh, I'm sharing and you can find that uh, publics have been categorized uh, into four. They are customers, they are producers, they are enablers and also they, they are uh, the limiters and uh, now we'll look at each public one by one and uh, try to understand uh, who are the producers or who are the limiters or who are the consumers as well and you find uh, the producers um, can be can uh, be categorized uh, such as the directors. Each organization and each institution has directors, uh, those who fall in their top management they, or even the owners. These are the people who direct the activities of an institution. We have also the financiers and these are the people who gives uh, funds uh, to organizations like the donors, like the banks, also the owners can be the financiers of the institution and therefore will fall under the producers. We also have the employees and these are people who are employed by an institution or even an organization and uh, they play a key role when it comes to production. Also the other the other the other publics who fall under producers are the suppliers and also the shareholders. Now to the publics, uh, number two, we have the customers and also they can be divided into four and the customers can be divided as the primary customers and these are 
customers who buys uh, goods uh, directly from the organization or they buy goods directly from an institution giving an example of an institution like mount kenya university you find that there are people who will come to get services direct from the university we have also the secondary customers and these buys are from the primary customers and you find that once a primary customer gets the goods from an institution now the secondary customers come and get the product from there institution a very good example is when we get products from the retailers or even their wholesalers we also have the shadow customers and these are the people who know who who never buys their product but also they are not uh, who never buys the product and uh, has some information concerning the the organizations and also the product they are also uh, potential customers and uh, the potential customers they are just prospective customers and uh, they can uh, end up buying the product once our uh, publicity is done well by the by the organization and this publicity can be done using different PR tools we will proceed to number three the public number three and also understand uh, who are the enablers and enablers uh, are the government agencies you find for any institution to thrive well in the society the government tend to license and also to help uh, any institution uh, conduct its uh, daily activities well also there is the media and the media are the channels that are used for the purposes of communication and you find a one way in which the media can act as a as an, an enabler it's the media can relay information that is essential to the stakeholders information that can aid an organization in uh, increase in uh, increasing their uh, profit also the media have been uh, used to mobilize uh, resources and uh, even at times of crisis you find that the media is uh, really used by different organization to mobilize their resources even at this point uh, looking as an, an institution like the kenyan the republic of kenya you find that it's the media that is being used to mobilize their resources as a result of helping those who are in the marginalized societies uh, at in such a time when we are facing the crisis the pandemic as a country and therefore media can mobilize their resources and that's uh, another way it acts as a an enabler also you find that uh, the media can also act as an enabler when it comes to monitoring government and also corporate giants for power abuse you find that at some point the government may abuse powers and also the compo the corporate giants may abuse powers that may make an organization stagnate or even not exist well in the society and therefore the media will act as a watchdog and it will point the issue that are, are making an organization not to thrive well in the society you find also the media you uh, helps in the researches and uh, different uh, researchers has uh, suggested that practitioners should always view the media as a shareholder as another partner when you have a good uh, relationship with the media that's a plus because the organization will rise because they'll give their ideas and also they'll also air stories that can uh, ensure that the public are having uh, uh, having good uh, trust and also faith with you as uh, an organization also there are other enablers the opinion leaders uh, you find that there are opinion leaders even the, in the society a good example we have uh, like Chris Kirubi he usually give his opinion that even helps organization to withstand also there is the promotional and uh, marketing organization that can act as a, an enabler and it can make an organization uh, stand and also an organization continue driving and also making profit in the society there are also other publics the further category and these are the limiters and uh, the limiters can also be categorized uh, into different categories and number one is the media and uh, as i said earlier the media are 
are channels, media are channels that are used for the purposes of communication. And you'll find that there are different uh, channels that touches on the broadcast, others touches on the print, and also now at this point we cannot even fail to mention the contemporary channels of communication uh, that are touching on the new technology such as the social media. You find that different uh, organizations are even using the social media for the purposes of reaching their uh, public. And you find that there, there's uh, ways in which uh, the media can uh, act as uh, a limiter. And uh, number one, you find that the media can take a particular interest in a typical subjective category of disaster and a crisis that, without too much reference to tangible references, feature craze, panic, and also collective stress. You find that at any time of a crisis, uh, because sometimes issues and crises are inevitable in organization, you find that the media may end up uh, airing information that may lead to a lot of fear, and the public may experience a lot of fear. Also, the media may air information that may bring a lot of confusion. Uh, and once people are in fear, they may even end up not even purchasing their services or you know, even not having the products that are sold by a given company because there was a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, fear that was uh relayed to them by the media. Also, another way the media can act as a limiter is by stimulating or encouraging political interference. When the media brings in political analysts to analyze different uh, organizations, and you find that these analysts may end up bringing information that uh, may interfere with the institution or an organization. Or when the media start inviting uh, politicians to give their opinion and their comments on uh, information or with regard to the mission and the vision of a given institution. Also, you find that uh, sometimes the media fail to look for credible information about uh, the institution and they may end up making even generalization or even giving information that is uh, credible that may even ruin the reputation of an organization and also tarnish the image of an organization. And that's, uh, those are some of the ways in which the media can an actor as a limiter and uh, we'll, also, we'll proceed. Also you find that uh uh, our media has uh, been relaying information uh, that is uh, too sensational and uh, information that is more of opinion, that is more of rumors and when this information is uh, relayed to the public, it end up tarnishing or ruining the uh, reputation of an organization. Also interviewing uh, impositors, exaggerating casualties and statistics whenever there is a crisis or whenever there is an issue. Also other limiters, other categories of limiters are the government agencies. You find that even uh, with the licenses, sometimes licensing the institution, it uh, inhibits the normal activities or smooth running of an organization. And also the competitors, you find that uh, there are different uh, institutions uh, producing or even having the same product. And when they come in, uh, they may also make uh, an institution stagnate because of the, that competition power. Those are just types of the publics that are addressed by public relation writers using different uh, public relation tools. Now we will proceed uh, to to the activities that are uh, the activities of public relations or the the activities of public relations uh, practice, you find that there are different activities of public relations uh, practice. And number one is the issues management. And you find that uh, this involves the proactive or systematic identification of an issue. And uh, with the identification of this issue as they develop, you find that it is the public relations officers who respond to these issues uh, before the the issues escalates into a threat or even a risk. And uh, different scholars have defined what is uh, an issue. And uh, we will go by the definition uh, which is here. An issue is a concern 
in an organization that calls for attention. If not addressed, it escalates to risk or to risk or even a threat. And you find uh, most of the times the public relations officers will uh, write uh, different uh, materials for the purposes of addressing an issue that is in an organization before it escalates into a risk and also a threat. And once it escalates into a risk, it can even end up escalating into a crisis. Also, another activity of public uh, relations uh, is uh, crisis management and these are just reactive uh, systematic ways of identification of an issue and coming up with appropriate mechanism to deal with uh, with these uh, concerns and you find that these concerns they can make an organization uh, stagnate and also they can uh, make uh, they can destabilize an organization and uh, we'll proceed looking at some of the attributes of uh, a crisis and uh, the attributes of a uh, crisis you find that uh, once an organization is not in a stable condition you find that the crisis tend to affect everyone in the organization let's take an example of a country like Kenya we are undergoing through a pandemic and a crisis and you find that that the crisis that is in the country it's affecting everyone in the country and that's why we are saying that uh, one attribute of a crisis it 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 affects everyone in the organization also other organization that has been experiencing a crisis let's even look at a very good example of uh, an institution like uh, Kenyatta National Hospital there is a time they experienced they had uh, some issues and uh, the issues escalated into a crisis it started with the issues of uh, mortuary attendants raping uh, women uh, who had gone to seek for maternity services and then it escalated to another issues of uh, wrong brain surgery also uh, there were some issues concerning that the the hygiene of the institution that uh, the institution was not clean especially the toilets and also the um, the hospital and the wards also there were some issues that were even touching that uh, touching on uh, that people were left on the benches not attended they, these were just issues and they escalated into a crisis and these uh, the crisis affected everyone in the institution it even tarnished even the reputation of the institution and that's why we are saying that one of the characteristic of a crisis it affects everyone in the organization also you find that the crisis is a uh, sudden it is a uh, sudden not anticipated it catches uh, people unaware like uh, looking at the pandemic that we are experiencing in the country as an example it was sudden to us it's not something that we anticipated we had not hoped to experience such a crisis in the country also the siege mentality you find that once it gets the public unaware, it creates a lot of uh, distress, a lot of uh, confusion. An example of the pandemic that we are experiencing at the moment, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, at the beginning people were confused, at the beginning people were distressed because it got them unaware. Also, there is a lack of information and this happens. People start seeking information because there is no information about the crisis. And an example I'll also give an example on the pandemic. You find that uh, people are still seeking information now. Uh and uh, people were still seeking the information even back then when the pandemic was declared uh, to be a crisis. Also, there is a uh, scrutiny from the publics and these are uh, publics, the stakeholders, uh, the internal and also the external publics. They tend to seek information to question what happened, what is the cause of the crisis, which are the impact of the crisis, when will we go back to normal. These are just uh, the public try trying to scrutinize and to get more information touching on the crisis. Also, there is um, immediacy. Uh, there is that uh, aspect of uh, 
looking for instant uh, uh, ways of bringing out the solution or even trying to contain the situation. Also, there is a loss of life, property, finances, and also litigations. You find if an organization is involved in a crisis like uh, burning, an organization may lose a property, people may die in the accident. Also, apart from that, an organization may lose finances and also litigations. You want to pay lawyers, and once you're paying these lawyers, as uh, you'll still use a lot of money for the purposes of litigation. These are just some of the attributes of a crisis that uh, you find that uh, in public relations are writing, the PR tools are written for the purposes of addressing the crises that are there. An example of uh, of Kenyatta National Hospital when they had issues and crises. The spokesperson, Lily Koros, came out and uh, gave a statement with uh, regard to their situation, and they used even press statement. They even uh, called for um, media briefings. They also released some, um, they had some media releases, some fact sheets for the purposes of addressing the crisis and the issue that the organization was uh, facing at that moment. There is also another media relation uh, or p public relation activity and is the media relation the media relations and uh, media relations it's just the relationship between an organization and the media how the media relates with the uh, organization and how an organization uh, relates uh, with the media and for an organization to thrive or for an organization to withstand and to outshine in the society it must have a good uh, relationship with the uh, media and uh, you find that uh, the reason uh, why some organization are uh, outshining and some uh, organization are uh, uh, stagnating is as a result of the relationship between them and uh, the media. A very good of example of an organization that has a good uh, relationship with the media is the Mount Kenya University. You'll find even during the year events, they will invite different uh, media to come and uh, cover the year events whenever they are graduation, whenever they are exhibition, they'll invite different media. And also different uh, media will even advertise for the year services and their products and that's why we are saying that good uh, relationship with the media as an organization is a plus also there is the merchandising support and this is the packaging of a product and an idea or a person how goods are packaged or how goods are presented to the public it's um it's an activity of public relations. Also, we have event management. It's the Department of Public Relations that plans for events in an organization. An organization can have different uh, events touching on the launching of uh, product, launching of services, launching of ideas, and also touching on the sponsorship and also corporate social responsibility. And this is also another activity of public relations. And you find with even the event management, they can, uh, the, these events can even be advertised uh, via the media. They, th also, the public relations uh, writers can uh, write uh, uh, proposals for the purposes of planning for the event. And uh, you find that these are some of the areas that uh, public relations uh, writers can uh, write on. To proceed with another practice is... Uh, promotion and you find that the public relations officers can also uh, help in promotion of products and also services. They can even determine the promotion techniques that can be used. Uh, for example, they, uh, looking at a company like the Colgate company, they may decide uh, once, uh, once a customer buys uh, one Colgate 50 ml Colgate, we can give a free toothbrush. They are the people who determine on how the promotion will done and also how marketing will done. They may even determine, they may even come up with techniques like subsidizing the cost or even free delivery or even showing the publics on how to use a given product or even a given uh, gadget that has been uh, innovated in an institution. And that's the work of uh, work of uh, public relations department. There is also public affairs and the uh, publicity and this is more of creating awareness on uh, given services and also 
products and also how to relate with the outside or the community and also the government. You find that it's the role of the public relations department to organize on this and to ensure there is a smoother relationship between the organization and also the community and the government and also that awareness is well created for the purposes of good reputation in an organization. Also, there is another activity of public relations and it, there is a sponsorship and a sponsorship can be categorized into soft sponsorship. Uh, it can be categorized into soft spon sponsorship and cost reduced sponsorship and you find that it's an organization uh, or the public relations department that plans for the sponsorship they even come up with a proposal and look for their sponsors and follow up for people to sponsor an organization or even a given event in an organization and now uh, you find on sponsorship we have seen different organization uh, sponsoring different activities and also event in the society mount kenya university may decide even to sponsor a football club within the vicinity and that's part of a sponsorship and we find that it's the public relations department that plans for sponsorship also there is another activity the final activity that is addressed by by public relations department via different uh, PR tools and that is the CSR, the corporate social responsibility, giving back to the community and you find that uh, different organization has been involved in uh, corporate social responsibility like we have an example of uh, equity sponsoring education with wings to fly, we have KCB, they have uh, football they sponsor football, we have organization that has been involved in cleaning of the market uh, places others have been involved in planting of trees these are just ways of giving back to the community and uh, you find that it's the work of the public relations department to organize for these and also to have some materials that are touching on these uh, CSR or the so corporate social responsibilities. Now we'll proceed uh, to another subtopic, and that is uh, writing effective public relations uh, materials. And uh, public relations materials, they are just materials that are written by public uh, relations officers uh, for the purposes of communicating with the public or for the purposes of uh, creating awareness or for the purposes of addressing an issue that was there in the institution or for the purposes of passing information about events, about corporate uh, social responsibilities, about sponsorships. These are materials that are written by the public relations writers and they can be categorized into two. Uh, and controlled information and uh, controlled information. And we'll start by looking at what is a uh, controlled uh, information or controlled media. And you find that uh, controlled media are channels that allow organization to determine various attributes of message, especially the content of the media, the timing of the media, the presentation of the content, its packaging, tone and distribution the controlled media these are or controlled information these are in this is information that is controlled by an organization the organization or the editors in the organization have a key uh, say or they have an upper hand when it comes to the information that is released or they ha they can control which kind of information can be released also apart from that at what time the information will be released and uh, which uh, channel will be used to release the information a very good example is our uh, newsletters from an organization an example of an institution like MKU they are the one who control the information on the newsletter Letters, which content will appear in the newsletters? At what time will we have issue one of newsletters? Will we have it in January? Will we be having our newsletters at the end of 
each month? Will we be having them at the end of uh, the year? Will we be having them after three months or even after six months? They can control the time. They can control the information. They can control the distribution. Who can uh, receive this information in the newsletters? And that's why we are saying these can be categorized as controlled information or even controlled media. Also, there is uh, uncontrolled uh, information and uh, with uncontrolled information you find that uh, uncontrolled information um, entails those media in which someone are related to organization such as media gatekeeper determines those message attributes uncontrolled this is the information that you as an institution you cannot control the information is controlled maybe by the media or even a media gate Keeper. A very good example is the interviews. When a CEO of a given institution uh, attends an interview, is invited for an interview by a given media house, uh, they are directed by the news anchor or even the reporter who is uh, giving the interview questions to them. And therefore, they cannot control the information that uh, is getting to the media. They are going as per quarter. The news anchor is uh, directing or the guidelines that are coming from the reporter or the news anchor. The, those are just categories of uh, media or information when it comes to public relations uh, writing. And now we we'll look at uh, some of the materials that are written by public relations writers. And these are the materials we are calling the public relations tools. And uh, with, uh, with the tools, they are written by the public relations uh, writers. And number one is the news re releases. And the news uh, releases, you find that this communication is directed at uh, the, uh, the media houses. And mostly the uh, news information that are directed to the media houses. And you find that uh, most of the writers or the people who are involved in writing these news releases when uh, they are being released by different uh, organizations it's the public relations writers who write this information and then it's disseminated to the media houses for the purposes of airing this information to their publics using different uh, channels of communication it can be via tv it can be via radio it can this information can reach the public via radio or via tv or other channels that uh, may be used at that point also there is another tool known as backgrounder and uh, with uh, backgrounder these are basic information pieces providing background as an aid to reporters editors employees and also spokesperson and you find that uh, backgrounder is uh, written in chronological order or narrative fashion and it tends uh, to provide important background information to contextualize an event a person or an issue and uh, a backgrounder is an informational document often provided with a press release press advisory or also a media kit it's just a document that contains some background information uh, that is uh, related to whatever has been released uh, in the news release or media releases also the media kit there is also another tool or another material that is uh, written by a public relations officer and that is the public service announcements announcements can be announced via different uh, channels of communication and these announcements that may appear in tv or they may be broadcasted via radio or they may appear in the newspaper or they may be even uh, shared via the social media or even the websites you find that they are written by public relations officer or public relations writers there is also another public relation uh, tool that is usually created or, or even written by public uh, relations 
writers and that is advertising and you find that advertising involve uh, sharing of information uh, by an institution they share the information about their services their products and also their goods and this information is being shared to the public or to the target market and you find that uh, on creation and also writings uh, on how the advert will appear it's uh, the public relations department uh, in conjunction with the advertising department that works on that they can come up with a copy on uh, on uh, advert on the statement that will be used uh, the statement that will be used the punchlines it's the work of the public relations writers to coordinate that and also to plan for uh, messages that uh, will will be used together with the videos or the audios and also together with the pictures that will be related to the public also there is another PR tool that is written by public relations writers and that is the articles and editorials and uh, these uh, may appear in newsletters, in house publications, in uh, brochures of an institution or even in the newspaper and uh, it's the role of the public relations writers to write these articles and also to ensure that they are submitted uh, to different channels of communication such as newspaper if it's an editorial it can be even published in a newspaper if it's an article it can be published in a newspaper even a, can be published in a website or even different social media platform and you find that uh, whoever writes these articles and editorials for an organization it's the public relations officers or writers and that's just a tool that they usually write. There are also other public relations materials or tools, the collateral publications, and you find that uh, they are usually autonomous publications such as uh, pamphlets, flyers, brochures, and also other direct marketing pieces and uh, you find that these collateral publications uh, are written by public relations officers uh, for the purposes of uh, uh, sharing information, supporting information about an organization. Looking at even uh, an institution like MKU, they have different flyers, they have different pam different pamphlets, they have even brochures for the purposes of uh, sh making MKU known and for the purposes of sharing information about MKU, like their philosophies, their objectives, their mission. And you'll find all these information in the flyers, in the brochures, and also the pamphlets and also other direct marketing pieces like the bags that are used or even the envelopes where your forms are packaged in. It has all this information concerning the institution and it, you find that these materials can aid even in informing the public about their organization. There is also another a tool that is uh, written by public relations officers or writers, an annual report. And an annual report is an all-inclusive report of a company's activities in the uh, uh, company's activities in the preceding year. It's just a report of whatever had happened in the preceding year. And you find that uh, public relations officers, in conjunction with other uh, other departments. Uh, they oversee the writing of these annual reports and the uh, different institutions they give their annual reports even to the media for the purposes of displaying the information institution and organizations like banks their annual reports that shows on their profit margins their loss margins and some of the activities that they launched within the years and uh, within the preceding year and that's part of the annual report and it's written by public relation officer now to our last tool that is written by these public relations writers is uh, the speeches and the presentation you find that in different events and also in different during different activities institutions and organizations they give speeches and presentations and these presentations and speeches that are done by the ceos of an institution you find that also they are written by public relations writers
now to to another last tool that we cannot fail to mention you find that in the 21st century there are also other contemporary channels or tools that are used by public relations officers and uh, with uh, with the new technology we cannot fail to mention the internet you find that internet has increasingly become one of the most important communication uh, tool are uh, these uh, at the 21st century and therefore different public relations officers and writers have uh, learned to use different platform for the purposes of sharing information and you find organizations they are using even their websites they are sharing newsletters via their websites they are sharing uh, information concerning their activities and their milestone via the uh, websites and also via different uh, online platform and you find that uh, uh, different uh, public relations writers will end up writing for the web and uh, writing uh, materials for the organizations that is uh, published on their websites now to our last uh, topic you we will look at uh, models of public relations and uh, the reason why we are looking at the models of public relations as far as uh, public relations is concerned as far as uh, writing these uh, materials uh, is concerned you find that the writing of public relations materials is founded on the models of public relation and uh, there are four models that were developed by Grunig and Hunt in 1984 and uh, number one is a uh, press agentry the other model is public information there is the two-way asymmetrical model and the two-way symmetrical model uh, the press agentry uh, and public information model were the first model that were developed, the first models that were developed by Grunig and uh, Hunter. And uh, to them, uh, when they were developing the model, you find that uh, they proposed that uh, information should be disseminated in a linear form. And uh, once the information is the once the information is disseminated in the linear form, it gets to the public. And uh, with the press agentry, the difference between the press agentry and public information model, you find uh, as as much as they focus on sharing the information on a linear model, press agentry uses uh, some propaganda or gives the information in half truths or give the information that has some elements of lies. And a very good example of uh, this uh, communication is uh, when politicians share the in uh, information, you Using different channels or when they present different speeches you find that they give information that contains some lies or they give information promising a lot they have different manifestos but they know back in mind that they only want to to win the public or so they want to win the masses and after that they'll not end up fulfilling the the information they'll not end up fulfilling their promises and that's just an example of press agentry an example of public information model is when memos are used. Uh, you find that memos are used to communicate to internal publics, but the internal publics cannot give their views or they cannot give their responses based on whatever has been shared to them. And a, another example is when a newsletter is uh, printed and it's given to the uh, publics, they cannot even give their uh, feedback on the same, or maybe even they were not involved in the research uh, when it comes to coming coming up with the information. Those are public information and press agentry. They take the the linear form of communication. Uh, they don't allow for members to give their uh, feedback or the publics to give their uh, feedback. Yeah, and also to the other two models, uh, there is the two-way symmetrical and two-way asymmetrical models. And uh, the two-way uh, process of communication is seen when it comes to two-way asymmetrical and also the two-way symmetrical. The only difference uh, comes in uh, when the persuasion, the element of persuasion is seen. You find that with the two-way asymmetrical, the information is two-way, the 
publics are given an avenue or a platform to give in their views and their feedback. They're even involved in research. They are involved even in coming up with uh, these uh, information that will be written in the uh, PR materials. But... Uh, also with uh, the two-way symmetrical, but the two-way symmetrical has a room for persuasion. There is that convincing element such that uh, the publics are convinced to to buy a product or even to take the views of an organization or the opinion of an organization. But with the two-way asymmetrical, there is no persuasion. And you find that most of our public relations materials that gets to the public, they can either take the form of a press agentry, they can also take a form of a public uh, information model or even two ways asymmetrical uh, or even two-way symmetrical information can be either one way or two way this information can contain lies or it can be information that is a factual and also the aspect of persuasion it all depends with the model that uh, the PR writer decides to take but but uh, on the other hand the public relations writers should give information that is truthful and also they should be authentic such that they should not even have those hidden motives or hidden agenda. Also apart from that, they should be responsible enough to give information that they can even account for and also the aspect of equity and fairness, giving information that is fair and also respect to the public. There is no way you can address our uh, publics without uh, respecting them and therefore it is always advisable to give information that is uh, factual and that brings us uh, to the end of our lecture today uh, thank you for being part of our of this uh, lecture i'm glad to have you these televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our mku online platform you can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.